Dude, I love this movie. I thought it was just a, a fascinating, almost video game-like look into what we don't know as Americans, drone warfare, 21st century military warfare, and how things are being done right now. Talk to me about telling this story, what inspired you to want to put this to film. The start for me was, I mean, it was a culmination. You keep seeing these drone strikes, as you say, but I had no idea how they came about. And once you discover it and you realize you have this schizophrenic warfare where you have a pilot who's basically fighting the Taliban for 12 hours a day and then going to pick up the kids from school. We've just never had that kind of soldier before. And so that really fascinated me about what that does to his psyche. How do you deal with that? You've worked with Ethan before. And one of the things that with Ethan I love is we see these outspoken, verbal, almost gregarious type characters. But here we have the complete opposite. I mean, essentially, he's a brick wall. Talk to me about that change and watching him as an actor have to perform that change. Yeah, no, I called Ethan about the role and I said, you know, Ethan, you know how you have this wonderful facility with language? I said, we won't be needing any of that, you know, because he plays this strong, silent type who's emotionally shut down. It's why I give great props to January Jones because she is playing opposite a brick wall. Ethan's normally a very generous actor. He was giving her nothing because the character gives her nothing. And so it was uh, great to see her prod try and get something out of him. Ping pong is really a part of the movie and um, how he was obviously taking his work home with him. And so, the, you know, he would, he would go from a, a real battle to a domestic battle. And so that would became the interesting part of it. The chemistry between Ethan and January, it's just phenomenal. When you bring them together, is that instantaneous? Does that happen right away? Is there something that all of a sudden it clicks where she's trying to drag what she can out of him and he instead retreats? Well, the interesting thing is this couple wasn't clicking. <laughs> you know, the anti-click. <laughs> but so that kind of was, I guess, in some weird way easier. In fact, one of the uh, symptoms of PTSD is a decreased libido. So all of those difficult... Um, sex scenes that she might have been imagining January, they, there weren't many of them because couples like that, you know, are, uh, it's not happening. One of the things that really was brought to light in this movie was what soldiers have to deal with when they come off the field. We as Americans really don't realize it. We see what they're doing on the field, but off the field, they're coming home and they have PTSD. There's so many disorders. Family life is destroyed. Talk to me about that message and bring it to life through this film. Well, it's good to start a conversation about what we're doing to these soldiers when we ask them. We give them no decompression time, basically. You know, you used to go to war with a country, you'd go to the country. Now you just, you know, you do the nine to five, you go home. And so that has got to be wearing, especially when you're watching the destruction in high def. 